Well, this one's definitely been around the block a time or two. So this is a Quasar VH400 forehead VHS double azimuth. Wow. Uh, VCR. Yeah. Let's take a look at the back of it real quick. And I uh, hear loose things in it. What's going on with that? Uh, not hi-fi stereo, just mono linear audio only. And then there is the tag VH400 manufactured june 3rd 1991 so this is probably going to be a y chassis uh let's go ahead and pop the top on it real quick before we go any further and just do a visual inspection inside and see what it looks like now i believe on these units there are let's get straightened up here a couple of screws wow this is just full of sand there's a couple of screws here that have to be removed. And now look, did you hear that? Oh, come on, baby. There we go. Oh, wow, there's like plastic pieces falling out of the top um is the chassis yeah it's actually supported i'm going to flip this thing completely upside down and just see what falls out of it maybe it's the door more than anything i'm just going to go ahead and remove that from the front maybe Maybe it's just the door I was hearing. Man, it's on there. <laughs> Good packing tape, right? All right, good enough. Well, almost. Let's try to make it semi-clean. Well, I don't think it's gonna get there from here. It's a one-way dead-end street. Okay, well, that's in the trash, and yes, there certainly were just a couple of plastic pieces rolling around inside there. We'll save them just in case. The front's still mounted, which is interesting. Okay, well, it feels like there's a lot more loose stuff. Let's take a look over here at the power supply. Uh, main cap isn't bulged. I don't see any bulged secondary filter caps over here on this side. Uh, definitely is a Y-line chassis. Well, these weren't bad. They weren't good either, but uh, this replaced the G-line, which was the uh, the one with the solenoid and all the sun gears, just sun gears after sun gears. Uh, not gummed up. That's good. A lot of times this little piece, yellow piece down there, it used to be white, breaks. And uh, cylinder spins freely. Super freely. Okay, well, let's go ahead and give this thing some power and see what it might want to or not want to do. Looking for the mode select switch. I believe it's down on the bottom. Okay, that should be pretty good. All right, here we go. Power on. Oh, did something. Cylinder moved. Let's hit the power button on the front. Somewhere. There it is. Oh, the power light did light. That's a good sign. Uh, let's find a tape that can be munched. See what's going to happen. Well, from all outward appearances, it's going to play. One moment, please, while I connect the capture device. So let's stop this and eject it back out. And I'll turn the power off. Let that cylinder spin down, and then I will get a capture device connected. One moment, please. All right, here we go. Capture device is connected. Powering on the unit. Power on. And I do see a display on the screen, which is perfect. Let's pop a tape into it now. And we'll see what happens. Well, it is actually playing. I wonder 
if it's going to do some auto tracking or what because I don't have a remote so sometimes the channel buttons on these units would affect the tracking I'm holding the channel down button right now and I don't see any change this will be the channel up button and I still see no change so I don't believe there is a tracking adjustment available on this unit without the original remote unfortunately one moment please while I go check and see if I have a Panasonic remote I think I do and we're back and I did find a Panasonic remote goes with a uh, much higher end unit so let's go ahead and jam some batteries into this thing and see if the tracking will actually work I normally try to store my remotes without batteries so it does actually have tracking buttons on the remote so we'll hit the tracking button and nothing is happening at all what about something simple like stop nope it does not work this unit not close enough well at least we know that it does play an SLP tape so let's go ahead and stop it and eject it and I will get an SP tape or a two hour tape and we'll try that. This tape might be at the end. Waiting to come out in the next 50 years. Oh, that is an SLP. Let's rewind that. One moment, please. I'll pause this and resume. Okay, well there is an SLP or SP tape actually playing. And so by playing an SLP and an SP tape, it checks both the six hour heads and the two hour heads to make sure we don't have one video head that's clogged or defective. And so as you can see, that's SP playing, looks perfectly fine. Um, definitely out of focus, but that's on the camera end, not on the uh, VCR playback end. And you can see that's playing back perfectly fine. Um, well, I guess I'll give it a quick cleaning and try to reattach the door. One moment, please. Stop, eject, capture device stopping in three, two, one, stop. And I've got the door or the front off of the unit. And uh, no, that door is never going to be married again because it's missing a little post right here. As you can see this side, has a little post sticking out of it and that side does not it's supposed to go into that little hole which you can barely see and then that little hole on that side as well um, doggone it I was wondering I was hoping that uh, we could get this actually well it's, it's missing the spring that's part of the problem there's supposed to be a spring that wraps around this thing because I can actually snap it in place and uh, if it had this post on the other side and that's where the spring goes actually right there into that slot it wraps around the post on this side but it, it works just fine but as soon as you go like because I, I, yeah like that it's over well they'll just have to uh, tape it back on as they've been doing obviously for many years Okay, let's go ahead and clean this thing up. And, uh, yeah, I can't find anything wrong with it. Other than that, the door's broken, and uh, I can't fix that. Alright, power has been applied. Let's go ahead and start the capture device in 3, 2, 1, capture.
and it shows it is recording. Let's go ahead and pop a tape into it here. And I don't like the sound of that. Something's binding. Huh. That's interesting. Played fine a minute ago. Just maybe a bad spot it couldn't get over. That's weird. Well, power on, play. And it's playing just fine. That's weird. I'm going to load and unload the tape just a couple of times. Oh, you know what? I think it is. One moment. So, I think I did it. That's my bad. Let's go ahead and pop this pinch roller off real quick. And this little washer right here is right in the way as this thing spins out. But that can't be it. Yeah, it's actually getting hung up right there. Oh, that's strange. What is it getting hung up on? Certainly not the washer. And it's not that piece, it's perfectly loose. Oh, you know what? It's getting hung up. I know. I haven't adma advanced the mode select gear yet. So I pushed this down before I cleaned it. And I think they wanted it up just a little tiny bit. Let's see if that makes a difference. And I'm betting it's going to. Because now that's going to clear it with no problem. I could go ahead and take the whole Christmas tree off, but I don't want to have to try to retime it. Let's see what happens. Now I don't want to have to pull that whole thing off. Okay. We'll just put this thing back together and we'll give it another try. Okay, move it back into position where you guys can see it better. Okay, power on. And tape. There's tape. All right, tape going in. That loaded perfect. I'm sure that's what it was. And we'll hit play. And it's playing just fine. I'm actually going to push that down just a hair. I definitely want it under the tape level. Okay, that looks fine. Uh, there's a video of uh, me in 1997 driving to uh, Devil's Tower, Wyoming, I believe. Just on a road trip. Anyhow, playing perfectly fine. That, I believe, is going to be an SP. Yes, it is an SP. And uh, for VHS, the video quality looks just fine. Everything looks great. And uh, I think that's gonna wrap it up. I really couldn't find a problem with this, so I went ahead and uh, just basically did a quick service, tape path clean, audio head cleaning. And uh, yeah, there's my Mirage 99 I used to run. Anyhow, there is, well, it's the end of the video. I certainly hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond when I have time while you're down there. If you could please hit that subscribe button and like this video. It does help my channel grow and I really, really do appreciate it. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or X as it is now, at NorCal715. You can email me, NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Once again, please be patient. I have a full-time job. And there's just so much going on. I'm just so busy. I'm trying to knock these things out just as fast as I possibly can. So if you really want to contact me, leave me a YouTube comment. 
and then um, send me an email. I'll try to respond to either one or the other as the case may be. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everyone, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really, really appreciate it. Everyone, if you're so inclined, please have an excellent day. Bye-bye.